Is this the new king of luxury? The Chinese manufacturers are pushing to the premium and luxury market. Mercedes has presented the EQS. Now BMW says, hold my Bavarian beer, we can do better. But is it true? Can this all new BMW 7 series, including the electric i7, be even better than Bentley or Rolls Royce? We're going to find out together here with Thomas on Autogefühl for you. This one here you can see in the two-tone paint, 12,000 euros or dollars extra. You have the black on the top and here for example the Aventurine red on the lower part. Different color combinations are available. Throughout this review we'll show you different colors and both the petrol and the electric version will also solve the question petrol or electric what is better especially here in the luxury segment. Huge double kidney here. Very impressive. In the extended shadow line you can get it in all black but you could also get it in a more subtle note. Here, for example, in the two-tone paint, I think there's a transition between the top paint and the grill, which is not ideal, I think. Or oh, what's your take? Slim integration of the daytime running lights in the top and this split here. That was highly criticized by a lot of viewers as well, that you have the split between the daytime running light and the real headlamp unit. So I would like to hear your take on the front design here of the 7 Series in the new generation. G70 is the internal code. Join us in the comments. Let's go with the rest. 5 meter 39 or 212 inches is the length of the all new BMW 7 series. Of course, that counts for all the versions, no matter which powertrain you pick. And the interesting thing is that if you consider some of the competitors like a Mercedes EQS or a Neo ET7 or a Tesla Model S, this one here is indeed way longer and they are pushing in that Bentley or Rolls Royce direction. Rolls Royce is of course belonging to the BMW Corporation and Rolls Royce doesn't want to hear that, but we can show you some features today that it's actually true that they are pushing even more up market. It will only be available in this long wheelbase version. So far they had to split, for example, in Germany, more short wheelbase, in the US the long wheelbase was standard. They say now this is the world car, has just one wheelbase. Makes it simpler, simpler for us definitely. You see, I also dress in two-tone paint today, but I refuse to wear a red or wine red trousers for that one. Um, but you can see here, it's not only that split. Here there's another line for that. So it is very, very complicated to use this paint here in the pros. That's why it's so expensive. Me personally, I'm more team one tone, so one single paint, but are you team two paint? Also leave me then your comments. Wheels from 19 to 22 inch. These here are already big ones, 21 inch, somewhat still a compromise. Suspension, there will always be adaptive air suspension as standard. An option, there is a so-called driver's package and this then gives you rear axle steering anti-roll stabilization, so an even sporty effect and also better in turning around, turning circle, narrow parking and so on and so on. So this will also play a major effect. And now very interesting from the drag coefficient, 0.24 here for the BMW 7 series or i7 and this is worse than some of the competitors because here usually they go for a raindrop design but BMW more upright, more space also for the headroom and so on because they did not go for the raindrop design, rather German Bauhaus, a little bit more upright, and they did some small tweaks for the wind efficiency. You can see it, for example, also right there. Yeah, so a lot of work in the wind tunnel. But the question is, is it still very efficient, although they are a little bit worse than the competition in the drag coefficient, but it also has then, you can see here, higher trunk, more space in the rear and so on. So this has more advantages as for this, especially the luxury sedan segment. Soon, of course, more about the range for the i7 when we drive it and, of course, this comparison petrol versus electric. Here in the rear, the tail lamps are horizontally drawn, very modern, but still I prefer actually that this does not look this raindrop alike and say like, oh, this is only about wind efficiency. So a very strong designer also and yeah, in this case then also <laughs> with a two-tone paint here in the lower part. However, Fake exhaust police here on Autogefühl because yeah, these are tips then the real exhaust on the inside. It's really hard to get it focused here on camera, this detail, this extra strip. And I just wanted to show you when I touch this here, this transition, you can feel no transition at 
all. This is all perfectly smooth, so incredible paint job. And can you see that? This crystalline structure and the inside of the data mine lights here on this top part here, this is such an attention to detail. And indeed, never before there were so many interesting details with the 7 series and this generation is so much different from the predecessor also almost like never before. And this vehicle here is deep frozen gray in the color, a matte dark gray color, almost, I would say it's almost matte black, isn't it? But they call it deep frozen gray. Yeah, this finally now fits my outfit even better. And this is also the i7, by the way. But you can pick this color, of course, also for the petrol engine. Where do you see from the exterior if it's the EV or the petrol or maybe also diesel in Europe or the plug-in? Well, the thing is here, the electrified models here have the blue ring around the BMW logo and that's basically it. The rest, if you want here the double kidney in black with a frame here, again, extended shadow line also on this one, two-tone paint and so on, you decide that on your own, you decide it yourself. It's just they are more in the strategy, hey, we don't want the EV to look different. That's the 7 Series and you can pick it in the engine version or the motor version you like. Very interesting approach. What do you think about that? And also at the rear here, the one thing you can see, we have the blue ring here around the BMW logo to differentiate it and we also have the i7 logo right here. Once again, extended shadow line with blacked out rear lamps for, for more sinister look. So yeah, this looks really massive, doesn't it? Here it says xDrive 60. That's the first version of the i7. It is also all-wheel drive, one electric motor in the front, one electric motor in the rear. The acceleration figure is 4.7 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That's half a second slower than the V8. However, later there will be the M70 version of the i7, which will then be the quickest version of all of the whole lineup. They will also then have some hardware changes to the rear electric motor. Very interesting. The top speed for this one already 240 kilometers an hour or 150 miles an hour. So it's not really much slower than the petrol version. They go a little bit faster, but yeah, I think we can easily live with that even in Germany on the German Autobahn. We also have two more colors for you today, by the way, the oxide gray. Is that also gray? I'm not sure, but it looks really interesting. And also the mineral white that works very well also with contrasts, for example. Which color would you go for? I'm still looking forward to see one in Thomas Blue, of course, but I mean, these matte colors they offer here are also very striking. So which one is petrol, which one is EV? Can you tell? Let me tell you. Left side is the petrol one, right side the EV. You just see the blue ring around the logo. And here with this vehicle we have a very dark, elegant blue vehicle color. That's cool. And this one, as you can obviously see, has the illuminated double kidney. And the option is called Iconic Glow. And you have this outline then there and also welcoming function when you approach the vehicle. And as another option, there are also this Swarovski crystals option. <laughs> and this you can also see here at these headlamps. We also have in our other vehicle. This is the thing where, as, where you always can see these, these special details, you know, how they are worked out, this top part of the data mining light. Let's take a look at the turning indicators or hazard lights here, in this case on both sides. That looks also pretty special here in the front, right? But also at the rear and also in the interior. Let's take a look. The US spec version has the red turning indicators. Of course, then for example, European spec one where the yellow turning indicators would look a little bit more distinctive. Yeah, look at that, the ambient lighting. Woo, hazard light, <laughs> ambient lighting. Haven't seen that. What a great idea, right? It's, you know, it's just initially and then it turns off by the, yeah, but probably when you are somewhere having it on for a longer time that you don't get annoyed by it, but that's pretty special isn't it? And also when you approach the vehicle from the rear, it's some kind of welcoming signature. That's really impressive. And look at that interior light at night. Even more impressive than this case. And when you open the vehicle, you also get some kind of welcoming display. And then also the ambient lighting becomes more obvious. But even when you close the vehicle again, even from the outside, when the doors are closed, it looks really amazing. And when you get away from the vehicle again, at some point, it closes off. 
and then also says goodbye with this signature. The smartphone app offers some cool features. For example, if you have the automatic doors, then you can also open the doors via the smartphone. And that looks very impressive, especially when you open them all four at once. And what you can also do is use the remote parking function. So we know it maybe from Hyundai, Kia and Genesis that they do it with the key fob here, also with BMW, with the smartphone app. And then you can also ease your car out of parking lots or put them in when they're very narrow. Before we get to the interior, let's quickly take a look at the powertrains. This one here, the pure petrol version, this is the 4.4 liter V8 with 540 horsepower in the 760i. So the strongest petrol engine, 4.2 seconds is the acceleration figure. And then there will also be the 3 liter inline 6 cylinder pure petrol engine. This one will also be totally sufficient, 5.4 seconds is the acceleration figure there. However, the pure petrol engines are for the US market and some other countries, Northern America in general is the main market for that one. In Europe, we don't get the pure petrol engine, but we get the diesel. What is it? It's kind of a trade-off BMW, huh? <laughs> well, but for all markets, you get the plug-in hybrid based on the 3-liter inline six-cylinder petrol engine and the i7, the pure electric version. If you need some extra foot room, this is the version to go for. I'm just kidding. This is the cutaway model here where we can see more of that battery. This is the i7 cutaway and these cells here combined make a total capacity of 102 kilowatt hours net recharging will be 10 to 80 percent state of charge charge with DC charging in 34 minutes. It's the optimum at the 195 kilowatt peak and here at the closed side you can also see the two-tone paint when you have the top part here in the gray or silver styling then it has even more contrast and you can see this separate fine line even better and once again no transition here or you can feel no the transition with your finger is really very very, very well made well we're worth maybe <laughs> twelve thousand dollars or euros to you so you rather press here in this upper corner and then you move a little bit more backwards that you do not block the sensor. So when I press it here, the door does open automatically like this. And the question is, what about, you know, like the safety thing? So when I close it here from the inside again, and I'll be... Well, it... Oh, it still applies pressure. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, so it, it stops, yes. But actually, it's not too pleasant, I have to say. Let me stand up and then see again. Oh. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you could knock away children with that. It won't hurt so much and there won't be like a major accident. Yeah, but um, you just have to be aware of that, definitely. And the thing is also, what about from the outside? Pressing it here and then, ah, you can see, there it stops. So this is then better with the sensor so that it stops before it does hit everything so yeah that's the safety thing on the outside well when you're on the inside you just have to learn to control the doors a little bit better inside of the doors a lot of different materials are being used really screaming out bows and wilkins sound system here behind that c control in this crystalline look but you can still move that thing you get a haptic feedback unlike with the mercedes at the moment with the new models then here fabric with wool share this is this kind of interior but you would also get a sen uh, like a, a new a so-called veganza sensor tech um, it's like a, a more evolved sensor tech style if you get that interior and here high gloss black piano, piano lacquer that is i think the least favorable material we see here at the inside of the doors steering wheel in a new design this is here the m sport steering wheel as for the seats this one here the fabric wool share mix so this is the, like this you know more fabric approach to it why not in luxury segment reducing animal skin leather already a little bit the top part is animal origin however and then there's a full animal skin wrap still 
and new, however, here with the new 7 Series is the so-called Veganza material. It is basically the same appearance like the new sensor fin in the BMW X7 facelift, only that they use different suppliers. But they are both then kind of an elaborated sensor tech material, animal-free, less resource use, less energy used, better to animals, better to the workers and so on. So this is where it is heading to, definitely. Some limitations for the Veganza material as for the market choice. In Germany, we can basically get it for all the versions. In UK, you can get it for the i7, for the all electric version. And in the US, they make it the other way around. They don't offer the i7 with the Veganza material. And also not here, the eight cylinder. There you have to go for the six cylinder. I think not a good strategy to limit this offer there because the material is superb. It has also the very same durability, but way less impact on everything around us. So we've seen it in the X7, it is perfect and also way to go than here when specking this vehicle. As for the comfort here when seating, for the seat ergonomics, yeah, it's really very comfortable, very luxurious. And that's also the first thing when you take a look at the competitors. The new ED7 recently, I think, had also good comfort in seating. Tesla Model S and Mercedes EQS, there this one here has definitely way more comfort already when sitting in the front here. So for the seat ergonomics here and how you feel, this is one of the most luxurious sedans, definitely. And yeah, I mean, from the comfort in the front, they can easily, I think, even be better than Bentley or Rolls Royce. So you feel with everything they do here, they are pushing towards the segment. However, user interface you've already seen, they're getting more and more digital. Is that the right thing to do? We'll also tell you more about that. Interior overview, well, very clean first impression and told you <laughs> Mercedes EQS is all about ambient lighting. BMW says, hold my beer. We can also do ambient lighting and that's where we ended up with. So here, this looks really amazing. So this uh, yeah, like crystalline structure on the top. It's not glass though because that would have been, you know, not really crash safe. And here you can then switch through the different colors. And I mean, it's really bright. It's 12 o'clock noon at the moment here, and you can still very well see that. So that's actually a pretty cool idea to bring more spice to the interior. However, as for the vents control, if we take a closer look right here, um, this is also digitalized. and. Do you see here this, you know, this green dot jumping? This looks a little bit more like Space Invaders or so, <laughs> isn't it? Here on the driver and the co driver side, by the way, is the same. You can see the transition here between the door inside panel and this cockpit panel, how the ambient lighting is changing. So yeah, once again, especially at night, that's a very impressive feature. You still have buttons you can really press here, for example, for the cruise control. This is like one button, but then the central one is separated. Digital instruments, left side speed, right side here the RPM, boom, boom. <laughs> and then you can also change what you want to see in the middle. You can have here the music view from the CarPlay. You can have the GPS, car internal GPS, but it's also possible to show Apple Maps here or Google Maps with Android Auto. And ah, there we go, this is the front view camera. It's also a nice integration. Then you can also change the whole layout if you rather prefer, for example, this or this, um, yeah, well, maybe this, yeah. And you can also have just a central uh, speed in the middle if you want it rather reduced. Head display also with more elaborated view. It is always more crisp in real life than it is on camera. Um, yeah, I'll also see more about it when we drive the vehicle. Now the infotainment system here, the Temperature always stays in the lower part. I do prefer manual climate ops, you know that, but this one, at least it stays here, but not a real progress, I would think. Climate menu, you can also now turn on and off the AC function. They upgraded that, and here, for example, is the seat cooling and the seat heating and steering wheel heating, very important for winter time. This is my favorite winter time car function, actually. Then here, there's also a main menu available like this, but I think OS 8 is overkill. I did prefer OS 7. This one, of course, has just so many more functions overall. And yeah, I told you 
about the interior ambient lighting function, for example, that could, can be activated right here. And the My Mode selection is also interesting. So here you pick the different driving modes and then also the ambient lighting changes accordingly and also some parameters for driving. Here in Sport Mode, for example, the bolts of the seat go a little bit more inward, for example. You can still control everything from down below, so you don't have to use the touchscreen. So you can also control the CarPlay like this. And with Auto also available, both wireless and the integration is really cool here, definitely. And this Bowers & Wilkins sound system, I can tell you, it is just pleasure to listen to that one. Great song, by the way. Wow, such a great sound quality, amazing, wow. Lower middle console, this inductive charging pad here. And hard to pick it up on camera, but this is here a small slot and it is sucking away. Yeah, I did say that sucking away the air <laughs> from the smartphone though it doesn't overheat while inductive charging. <laughs> so and then here you have the cup holders you can open them slide like this and they are also adaptive and hold bottles tight. Did I just say like in one or two sentences now slot sucking and tight? Here again more high gloss black piano like I don't like it. The crystalline knob here is quite cool here and then you can still have this oh sound yeah, that's always cool. Uh, here the GPS hotkey, for example, a home hotkey. So you still have some things to control that you're used to. This here is the shifting lever. And this is basically the only thing you can differentiate if you're driving a petrol engine or the electric version. Here D and S, and whereas in the i7, the electric one, you have D and B for the recuperation mode, actually. We have my favorite split opening like this for the middle console. Not too much space here, two USB-C chargers. And well, BMW did not hand me over a key, but rather just a smartphone. And then you have this app here and you can lock and unlock your vehicle. Oh, they also uh, did this, you know, original two-tone paint design on there. I do prefer a normal knob. And we are also charging our camera echoes here, uh, camera batteries. Um, meanwhile, so um, yeah, it is usable, but not too much space. What about you? Would you go for the smartphone only solution? We know that Tesla customers also use that together with this key card. Or do you want to hold a real key fob in your hand? <laughs> why did the, why did Michelle's door close? So Michelle just got a hit in. The <laughs> he just got hit in in the back by the door. Ah, but wait, you, you did hit the, like the automatic door button, like this one here, right? Yeah, you did hit this one with your arm or something. So you, you basically, Michelle, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, funny things like these can happen with this new digitalized interface in the vehicle. And this is always the question, you know, like, like with the key fob. I do prefer a real key fob, you know. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna go to BMW and do a Karen, like, I wanna talk to the manager. I want a real key fob, I paid for this. <laughs> yeah, you still get the normal key fob, yes, that's a good thing, and you can use it, but on these, you know, um, test drives, they also encourage you to use all the digital functions of the vehicle. And um, yeah, I sometimes try to keep it a little bit more, you know, down to earth as for the vehicles, so. You can still use some buttons here, um, but I'm not sure, like also with the automatic door opening and closing and so on. Rear area, before we get to the executive driving, being chauffeured position, what about when I'm sitting behind the tall driver? Yes, that's me. Here, the leg room is still sufficient. They are not making good use of the space, but there will always be enough space available. And also as for the headroom, and here's the thing that they, um, did a compromise with aerodynamics, so they could still offer a lot of headroom even with one meters 89 or six for two. And the comfort here, if you compare it to the EQS, is so much better indeed. So BMW clearly wins it here. And I have to say, would I need a Bentley or Rolls Royce for that and pay even more? I think really not. It is super luxurious in here indeed. And the thing is, when you have the Mercedes comparison, you have to compare this one both to the S-Class and to the EQS. And the difference in rear comfort is so huge to the EQS. S-Class also offers decent rear comfort, yes, of course. Um, but here, of course, BMW decided to have one vehicle for the both electric and the petrol version, and nothing will be different here in the interior, really. That's a very crucial point. 
The one thing I do criticize you with this vehicle is, but that's not only about BMW, it's about all the brands, using this vehicle has become more complicated. So I put up the shade here. So when I, I want to open the window, um, here I can also lower the shade manually, but then when I want to um, put up again, it's not working here. It's, it would be a, like a logic solution. I just pull this lever and then the shade comes, you know, first the window and then the shade. That would make sense. It's not possible when lowering it, it goes down, but I can't put it up again that way. Then I have to go here deep in the menu. Yes, I'm continuing with that today, deep in the menu. So, um, and then I have to switch it here on the screen that this shade comes up. And I wonder, I mean, if you're driving 10 hours all day and maybe this is kind of like a hobby, it takes more time to use car functions. And I'm, you know, I'm keeping myself busy uh, while being chauffeured. That's maybe a thing, you know, but I tend to say, I want to have things straightforward and just technology improvement when it makes my life easier and not more complicated. Also, you know, where are the seat controls here that I can like put the seat forward or backward again, just like in one second. It's not there. It's again in the screen that they don't need so much, so many buttons. So, and then I have to go to the home menu again, switch to seats and then control the driving position here. What I want to have. It works, yes, and they've done a great job and everything looks great and so on, but it just takes more time. You will get faster over time, but when we directly compare the old school solution and the new school solution, the user interface is just taking more time now. And this is the thing I meant. So, I mean, considering it is an early, ah, there we go. It's an early production model, uh, so things will still improve also software-wise definitely, but. I just had a screen crash now. I had to wait until the screen reloads itself. So, um, but w when I would have separate seat control here, I could still do that and don't care about the crashing screen. But here, then you have to wait for the screen to re restart and it took like two minutes now or something. And by the way, at least what is redundant is the door control. You have three way. Yes, three way. I got it. I got that. Thank you. <laughs> and then you have three ways to adjust, uh, to open the door here. When you press this button, it just opens slightly and then you can press it further. Second way is this button up here. This is then the automatic door opener and it really opens all the way. Oh, sorry, that gets really bright now, you know. And then we can close it all again. And then the manual way, because this is, of course, uh, you know, important emergency fail safe. This is the manual door opener. Um, when all electronics fail, it, you can still manual open that door. Oh my god, this is not spacious enough. Yeah, of course. Now we can use the executive being chauffeured position and I activate here on the screen set lounge position it is called. There we can see magic. The front seat is moving forward. Let's see. Of course it takes a while. While that is going forward, I can also show you this one here, the armrest. Again, inductive charging pad, air is being sucked away. And then here is Soma storage with two more USB-C chargers. And the quality of the materials, how everything is processed in the interior is really outstanding. And now, there we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take my shoes off now. And because you can see here the seat, it's going up. Oh, this is awesome, right? This is awesome, look at that, wow. This is really amazing, super comfortable. And then you can also rest your feet here on this you know, special footrest that is being going up. <sighs> this is really amazing. Now the seat is going a little bit more backward. And once again, you know, me with 189 and six foot two, this is sufficient for my size. Actually, it's still going. Now position is reached. Oh, hmm. Maybe I should switch and start traveling just here in this position and get a driver. You want to be my driver? Applications in the comments. <laughs> that would be awesome, right? And we also can get to know each other, right? So, yeah, wow, this is extremely comfortable. It works size-wise. What a great idea here. So, 
this is really some amazing equipment here and also the head restraint is super comfortable so is it king of luxury now from what we've seen here so far maybe not king of user interface but which car is it nowadays but from the comfort perspective wow this is outstanding indeed and i really don't need a rolls or a bentley now indeed and now it's time for the theater mode let's try it with the voice input Hey BMW, activate theater mode. I will activate the theater mode. Ta da! Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's a cool effect with the sound and song, right? So it goes down like this. You always have to ensure that the front seats are also, uh, you know, far away down yes keep using and then uh, this is here with Amazon Fire TV and you can have for example Prime Video but you can also watch YouTube so that would be possible depending of course on the online connection so here for example you can watch pre-downloaded content then um, if you have done it before and don't have a Wi-Fi connection that is one possibility um, Thomas hey what are you doing there <laughs> <laughs> I'm already taking a look at our footage because that's the thing what you can also do here. So we connected now this MacBook here with an HDMI cable to the screen and then we can take a look at our footage here which we have just been shooting. Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's very crisp this image quality, really cool of course here in full 4K now here in Autogroup for you. Well to work really with it that is creating too much delay, that doesn't really make sense. but. For example, if you have something, you know, like movies, maybe on your laptop and want to have the HDMI connection, that would be possible. Um, you can then select the source, either the Fire TV or then here the HDMI. It is also USB-C connection on the back part, but that is not for using as input. That would have been cool as well, maybe like with a USB-C stick or something, but that's not possible. But yeah, it does deliver you some possibilities and the, let's say, more straightforward use would be, I mean, here at the back part of the seats, there's USB-C charging, also some mounts for uh, iPad holders. So, yeah, at the end of the day, is it really useful, this theater screen? It's great for the show effect, but will people rather use their own devices and watch the thing on their smartphone or on the tablet? Probably yes. Or what's your take on that? And the shade of the panoramic roof, by the way, is going forward so it starts at the rear here and then it's being rolled in in the front and the reason for that is by that they can also ensure more rear headroom because they are storing it here in the front that's a very clever idea indeed you cannot open the sunroof it's just that blind you can close or open and the secondary interior here with bright styling the same style, same color you can also get with the leatherette Veganza material, so that would look and feel the same. And this one here is also an i7, but that's once again from the interior. How can I see that? It's actually just the one thing that is here, the B and the D. So we have the, the like the, the full recuperation mode we can pick here um, instead of the S mode for the combustion engines but that's basically about it everything else is the same there's also no compromise as for headroom or something so it is really they went for hey we built one vehicle and then you pick the different powertrains but in driving they will differ or will they well we're going to find out oh and the blue ring around the steering wheel that's of course the other thing you can see that it's an electric vehicle here or the ev version on the interior and now to the trunk, let's take a look. 540 liters here for the petrol version. We'll soon also compare the EV. Let's see here, the cabin trolley also easily fits in in a vertical way, so good measurement, of course. Then here, I installed the light right there that you can also see the back of the vehicle. And this is the length of, let's say like 115 in meters or 45 inches. And the crucial width here on the inside is a little bit less than 80 centimeters or 31 inches it's just way wider here on the very front part interesting also the height of course and this is at 57 centimeters or 22 inches and this is the trunk of the ev of the i7 you see here in the petrol version 
like this step was a little bit lower so this whole floor is a little higher however in the front you still have space for charging cable it's just that this thing here is covered and the height difference then is that here we are at 50 centimeters or 20 inches whereas we were at 22 inches or 57 centimeters with the petrol version so this is the gap then you lose in height with the EV version I think you can live with that Welcome to Thomas's luxury driving lounge and I really wanted to start with dynamic driving. It's soon to come, but then I was driving straight and I thought like, I have to begin with driving straight because this vehicle here, the all new BMW 7 series, is already a star when just driving straight. I mean, I'm just driving pure, pure straight road and then like, I'm flying, you know? also have the assistance systems here they're keeping you in the lane active lane keeping assist very smooth as for the transitions and so on and you hear almost nothing from the outside you are totally decoupled from everything so the stress level is immediately lower it's great comfort in the seats and so on wow just wow the the luxury comfort we have here is outstanding and yeah once again I have to say to one of the first questions are they closing the gap here to Bentley and Rolls-Royce definitely I mean they're almost making Rolls-Royce obsolete it's about more like the individual choices of course that's the thing then you know and but it's really more about you pay more because you want to pay more but you don't have to although this is not cheap at all you know but yeah this is easily driving wise also king of luxury wow but then we also it's still a BMW that's why I initially also wanted to begin with that what's to come here you could maybe also already see it right here winding corners here outside of Palm Springs California really testing the vehicle how agile is it although it is that large it has that long wheelbase Short um, remark to the fuel economy here of the 8-cylinder, 4.4-liter 8-cylinder. You can, in a calm driving, you know, motorway, 100 kilometers, 60 miles an hour, cruise control, do some 9 to 10 liters on the 100 kilometers and some um, 25 mpg US or even in the 30s of the mpg UK. That is possible. If you use that power a little bit, it can also easily up jump up to about 30 meters on one kilometers and then more go down below 20 mpg both us and uk so that's like the the spectrum and we will test first here the petrol engine the v8 and then we will get to the i7 to the all electric version and compare also what is actually better petrol or electric i know this area here a little bit that's why I know we can, you know, just hold here on the right side and then do an acceleration onto the road again without, um, you know, having any any kind of risk or something. So here we go, and I'll put it to the my modes. It's a little bit tough to select that here, and then I put it to sports mode. And there's no one. There's one car coming, and then we can hit the accelerator pedal. And let's see, it's a little slightly uphill. Let's see, let's go. <laughs> Blop, that's 55 miles an hour. Wow. So that was almost zero to 60 miles an hour. Woo! Wow. So that was something. You good, Michelle? He's like, I mean, it did like the super quick acceleration that v8 sound hammered in and he's like oh i'm flying still this is so relaxing so yeah let's see if i can get him out of his relaxing mode here michelle so we are hunting up these corners and see how agile is it this vehicle has everything in it adaptive air suspension goes a little bit stiffer than here in these corners and also the integral active steering so that's a rear axle steering and together also with the anti-roll stabilization and this car is not leaning into the corners at all wow um the weight distribution here is a little bit 
worse with the petrol engine than with the EV. So the goal is always 50-50 at BMW and the EV has perfect 50-50. This one here, the petrol, has like just slight percentage um, more to the front axle because of the uh, of the petrol engine but it's just just a little difference so this was i talked to the chief engineer and he said actually one of his biggest task with this um, one platform solution was to exactly achieve that that both drive quite equal is that true we'll find out very soon i can already tell you here so far with the petrol engine it drives phenomenal and you know i'm testing a lot of different vehicles and in the last 10 years I've been driving I don't know 1,500 different cars this one is no doubt one of the most exceptional ones rarely do we find that a vehicle especially of that size has this kind of agile driving feeling I mean and it's really it's really super unique on the one hand it feels extremely smooth and comfortable. On the other hand, you feel like, wow, I mean, this is actually quite light and and very sporty indeed. So uh, we can also do that with it, like what the truck does, with the local. Yeah, just always try to obey the speed limit. I still need my driver's license. Wow, and then, I mean, this V8 has a nice sound. It gets you a little bit more emotions. Let's see if that EV later on can keep up to that. It's also battery smooth when you hit the accelerator pedal. There's no delay whatsoever from that V8. And this slightly growling sound, not accelerated at all. Steering gives me a very good feeling. Wow, what a view down to Palm Springs. So steering gives me a great possibility to control the vehicle. I, I can't believe I'm driving such a huge and long vehicle. It doesn't feel like that at all. Michelle? He's flabbergasted. Super, super relaxing, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really not driving slowly here, you know? So, uh, and they're like, also like the G-force that are applied on the body. Sometimes when you're hitting these serpentine roads, especially like the co-drivers say like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's like, I'm really driving quite quickly here. I mean, yeah, this uh, truck driver here in front of me, that, he is really onto this now here too. He must be feeling way different than we uh, in this in this 7 Series here. But wow, driving dynamics wise, this is on another level. And not only in comparison to the, the previous, which was already good, definitely. But yeah, I mean, also the competition. They are building very, very nice cars as well. No doubt about that. But this is also driving wise, both in the comfort and in the uh, agility direction. Really, this owns the competition. And I, I rarely say that, you know. So, and you know, when you're, you're a long term subscriber here, that, you know, that I'm for Germany doesn't have anything to do in how I rate cars from which countries and most cars are international built anyway BMW also builds a lot of their cars in the US primarily especially the SUVs so and I'm also not brand focused or something so they say oh like this is my favorite brand therefore I rate it in a, in a better way or something like that a lot of you guys already know that uh, I used to own a lot of Jaguars and so on huge fan of all the British vehicles and so on so I can really just say that without any bias this is one of the most superb cars in, you know, in, in, in the driving, definitely, like ever. Wow, I'm, I'm really just literally blown away how good that is. So, um, yeah, and I mean, when I just think about, hey, picking it in a nice color, getting the uh, new Veganza uh, evolved center tech seats here for animal free seating, maybe in a bright color or something, that would have been a K-Gas combination, right? So, um, yeah just have to recheck then again if I can really afford that <laughs> so yeah that, that's of course always uh, something else with the BMW 7 series uh, you, oh, you could also wait 10 years and then buy a used one <laughs> so um, yeah I mean usually after three years they lose half of the um, of the price these very expensive vehicles so you might wait in at least three years or something wow this is I mean it's it's strange I mean quite often you have cars that are really comfortable and relaxing 
and you have cars that are really sporty and then the variables change a little bit and rarely have I had a, an experience where I have so much sporty driving fun but so much relaxed comfort at the same time. It seems like a complete contradiction, you know, so it seems like a, uh, like a goal conflict. But it's actually true. Wow, that is really cool. Driving modes, there was a sport mode here and we can also go to the, um, say like the relax mode. In the relax mode, in the relax mode, the, that was a nice test as well. So the sunshade goes da uh, goes closed in the relaxed mode. We have our camera mounted up there. And that was, thank you, good boy. So that was well done by the sunshade. It did hit the camera mount, but it did them immediately stop and not destroy it. And we, believe me, we had other sunshades there before. So well done sunshade. That's live here on Auto Fuel, the most authentic experience in reviewing you can get. In relaxing mode, I'm not sure if you feel it, uh, Michelle. Um, there is, yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> there is the seat massage. I also feel it. That's very well done, that seat, seat massage, right? Will you also be happy with the six-cylinder engine? Definitely, it will deliver more than enough power. It will have a better fuel economy. They are electrifying their whole portfolio, even though when you don't have an all-electric version, you have always like a mild hybrid inbuilt then or then the plug-in hybrid will also be available, of course, together with the six-cylinder petrol engine. So my tip rather would be then to stick with the smallest petrol engine if you don't go EV yet, because this will be totally sufficient and will already deliver you the same kind of fun. And yes, the V8 always has some kind of better sound. However, this car is so well insulated that you heard it maybe earlier, but you don't hear the engine that much because the cabin is so well insulated. I mean, there's no wind noise whatsoever from the exterior. Um, yeah, that's really, I mean, also like 21 inch wheels on this vehicle and still such a great comfort from suspension. If you want an even softer ride, you would stick with smaller wheels. So no matter which car you have, you can always vary comfort and sportiness with the wheels. The bigger wheels you, you get, the sportier the car will feel, the more direct it will feel. When you get smaller wheels, it will have more dampening from the tire and you will have more comfort. So you can just choose that yourself. And here we go. This is the i7, the all electric version of the all new BMW 7 Series. And well, the first surprising thing is you hardly feel a difference, at least when driving straight here now. You have this great floating ride from the air suspension. And since it, you feel the shifting, of course, in the combustion engine, but since it's done in a very smooth way, it's not a huge difference. So from the get-go here, there has hardly ever been a vehicle where there are different powertrain versions of it where the difference between the EV and the non-EV version is so little in the first feeling. So that's, that's really, really interesting. Um, of course, you have the throttle input is a like little bit more directly, but they also both tuned these vehicles in a way that there also is not the biggest difference between that. So, wow, super interesting. And when there would be like the V8 sound, it would be almost the same. There is also the sound here, these iconic sounds, as they call it. We will soon hop to the sports mode, do the same acceleration as we did yesterday. This one here on paper, a little bit less quick in this version. Later, as I said, there will be electric version, all electric version, which will be even quicker than everyone. And in the sport mode, the sound will be even more enhanced. So we will experience that. But when you're driving straight here now, you basically get almost the same experience both with the petrol and the EV. This um, sonorous low frequency growling from a six or eight cylinder is of course always something that just, you know, appears to your body somehow, you know? That's um, not necessarily a thing like, oh, we're petrol heads or something. That's, it's for real, you know? Also with vibrations and something. So that is kind of cool. 
um, that it, you don't feel it here, but since this vehicle has such a great insulation, the difference again is not that large. So now sports mode and we'll hear more of these iconic sounds. Let's accelerate it out. Let's go. Launch control. Oh, that's 55 miles an hour. Wow. Whew. And you also heard that sound building up. That was pretty amazing. You liked it, Michelle? He's a fan of iconic sound stuff. Um, you know, you can always deactivate it. So everything you hear now from this, you can completely deactivate it. It's just a thing like if you want that. Um, it is not very extreme. So there are electric vehicles where you have more sound feedback. So here they thought with a 7 Series, we don't exaggerate it. You know, in the sports mode here, you hear, of course, more of that. I think it's still subtle enough. Here now in these corners, once again, they feel pretty similar. So the EV has a little bit better weight distribution. And also the center of gravity is lower because the batteries are put in the floor. We've seen the cutaway model. Then again, the overall weight, of course, the battery is quite heavy. So, yeah, but you know, the, the question is really, what's the result then for the customer? And I have to say, once again, it feels pretty similar. So uh, I can just stress how it was with the slower driving. Also here, it is actually less than expected. There is also this instant acceleration. It's so super smooth. The feeling from the throttle pedal is a little bit more linear and artificial, of course. With a ICE, internal combustion engine, you always have some kind of power curve, which somehow feels more natural because it's not that digital, it's not that linear. And to me, this is something, let's say, a little bit more human, you know what I mean? Um, again, the difference is not that large. And here, wow, it's so well put on the road doesn't shake up at all. It's a lot of fun and at the same time it's super comfortable once again. Yeah, I'm really once again impressed by the driving behavior here. And we don't have it here that we would feel, oh, like because of the weight of the batteries we are getting pushed out of the corners or something. Hmm. The big question is indeed, is any of these vehicles here, or any of these versions, you have to say, more fun? And it's a tough question, you know, sometimes I'm absolutely certain when I have these ratings or these verdicts and then I'm, you know, like, okay, this is more fun or this is more fun. But here, it's both a lot of fun, definitely. Hmm. Maybe I would say that when you have the combustion engine, it feeds a little bit more natural because of that power curve. So it's, to me, it is not that perfect like you know this digitalized linear power curve of the of the EV and because it is less perfect it feels to me more natural and maybe a little bit more likable so when I'm just based it on the pure feeling thing maybe yeah I would say the combustion engine is still a little bit more pleasing I don't need the V8 for that. I would just be fine with the six cylinder. I think the BMW six cylinder is the best engine pick in the whole lineup across all the models. The inline six petrol from BMW is the best engine you can pick there. But that's, you know, on the, on the pure fun side and also with, with minor difference. <clears throat> um, here, the crucial thing is really charging infrastructure. So if you're willing to go EV yet and you have the charging infrastructure, you can as well go for the i7, no problem. If you're driving every day, long, long, long mileage and have no good charging possibility, then of course it's still uh, one of the combustion engines. Um, so I think it really rather comes down to do you have the charging infrastructure or not? That's, that's really the, the, the crucial thing. 
As for recuperation, so far we're going uphill, but we're soon finishing this uphill run here. And I'll talk more about the recuperation modes. At the moment we're in the adaptive mode. And that means that usually when I lift the throttle, there is rather rolling. Only when here now, the car is in front of me and I'm too close to it, then recuperation is happening. This is somewhat like of a good compromise. The only thing is that it's not that predictable what the car will do. If you rather want that, you can also pull this shifting lever and then you are in the B mode and then you have more one pedal driving feeling. So here, always, oh, wow, really strong deceleration. That is a true one pedal driving. So if you prefer that, you can have that. Talking about the driving modes here, by the way, as for the steering, um, the steering is crisp and direct. Um, the only thing I, I would like to be improved, BMW more moved to the direction of, hey, let's make the car easy and light to steer and by that convey a feeling of being more agile. Whereas the old school approach, especially in sporty vehicles, is more like, hey, let's apply more feeling to the vehicle by giving it a little bit more resistance. And uh, to me, I feel it's somehow cooler when the steering has some more resistance in it. See here in the sports mode, it's still pretty light. So again, it's crisp and direct. Yeah, in the sport mode, you have a little bit more resistance, but me personally as a driver, I would like to have a little bit more resistance in the steering wheel, but it's still fine. And of course, big advantage for the EV is, we went uphill now, and when we go downhill again, we will gain so much energy back. So of course, the EV then, especially when there are topography changes, is so much more efficient. And here we go with our test result for today. So it's three miles per kilowatt hour. And that means considering a 102 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, over 300 miles of electric range. It's like 500 kilometers. You can see here we've been driving two, over 200 miles for you today. And this is here, by the way, we gained over 22 kilowatt hours back to the battery by recuperation. Overall, that's a comparable result and a good result. Also, if you compare it to the competition, like the Mercedes EQS, the Mercedes EQS has better wind efficiency on the motorway, yes, but it does not feature a heat pump yet. Probably will receive it later. Here, the BMW i7 already gets a heat pump from standard equipment, so you're also safe then in winter times. So I did adapt to the temperature outside now a little bit, and yeah, I think that's also fitting to the vehicle, isn't it? <laughs> so the question is, we had a lot of questions initially, does it own even Bentley and Rolls-Royce? Yeah, kinda. I don't need a Bentley or Rolls-Royce when I can have that. You just pay extra in price without getting any more benefit, actually. You can have everything with that. Plus, they now also have the new animal-free interior. We haven't had it today. But we've already seen it in the X7, and that's absolutely perfect. And that's why they have a more sustainable setup, and they really can combine the luxury and sustainability aspect, of course, as far as possible. Question also, petrol versus the EV here. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's really a question of infrastructure. You have to have that, otherwise, um, you know, it's definitely more complicated. Here with a range of about 500 kilometers or 300 miles, the EV is slightly catching up at least to the V8, especially if you have the six cylinder, you will have even more range. Of course, the six cylinder will be king of range. So yes, the combustion engines will still give you a higher range, that's for certain. The question is your driving profile and is your charging infrastructure ready yet. From a driving experience, both come so close indeed, you can't really say the other one is way more fun than the other one or something. I felt like this low sonorous frequency sound of the eight cylinder does deliver some more natural fun driving feeling, a little bit just, than the i7. But again, it's not a huge difference. That shouldn't be the crucial point if you go EV or not, actually. And what about the direct competition from the premium manufacturers like Mercedes, for example? Well, especially with the rear comfort, it's easily or way better than the Mercedes EQS and also everything else. The only thing 
with these new vehicles here also in this new generation, the user interface has become more complicated. That's also the thing here. You can use, get used to it a little bit, but still I think at some points they were going in a too complicated direction. Other than that, what an impressive vehicle. And you should compare it to the Mercedes EQS or if you're going to go luxury SUV, BMW X7.